from Miami, Florida. Today we get to enjoy the temperature-controlled atmosphere under the roof of Marlins Park. Today we wrap up the homestand with the third of three between the Cincinnati Reds and the Miami Marlins. Major League Baseball on the show starts now. Freddie Barrera starts the game on the mound for the third and final game of the series. What's your take on him, Dan? Hey, Matt, we're getting a look at a guy that's really been struggling lately. In his last three starts, he has a whip of over 1.50. Lots of base runners, lots of hits, and lots of walks, and that doesn't add up to very good performances, so he's going to look to turn things around in this one here today. Ready now, Jimmy Childers. He will lead this one off today. And we are underway this afternoon from Miami as the first pitch is taken for ball one. These Marlins as they take the field this afternoon, they come in scuffling a bit of late, just two and four over their last six games. Yeah, Matty B. Hey, d -Row, we're looking at a team that's playing some pretty good baseball right now. Through the first five games of this homestand, four and one, and looking for some bigger and better things. Yeah, we had a chance to sit down before the game after BP with the manager. He was really pleased with the way his team has played in these last five. Let's see if it continues today. And that one misses as well. So it's a poor start here this afternoon as it's a four-pitch walk to get things going. It's all a part of learning how to pitch in the big leagues. Major League hitters will not bail you out by swinging at pitches out of the zone. So he's going to have to continue to learn how to get guys out at this level. And here's Jose Peraza. First chance for him here with a man on following the leadoff walk. There's a fastball to start him off, but that misses for ball one. Looking at his lifetime numbers, Peraza is slugging a little under the 400 mark, so the chances of his connecting with the ball right here aren't particularly good. Childers gets his lead at first, nobody out. That's upstairs running the count to three and one. Got to find a way to get back in the zone. I know you're in danger of losing both to walks, but certainly don't miss over the heart of the plate and have this guy gap one, or even worse, hit a two-run home. Swing and a little tapper. That's a foul ball. Boy, that misses as well. It's back-to-back -back walks to start out the inning. Some guys take a little time to find the zone, but with the second walk of the first inning, it might be a little more than just settling in here. Not sure how long of a leash they'll give him, but they're not going to let him walk the world out there. Digging in, Joey Votto. And the home-away splits tell us he's actually quite a bit better hitting on the road than he is at home. Comes set. Here's the nothing and nothing pitch. Swing and a miss just behind a lively fastball. Great job of getting back in the zone with a hard fastball after the walk. I think he might have let a little frustration out with that pitch. Now the 0-1. A wave and a miss. A tick behind a good fastball. Two mid-90s fastballs right there that he doesn't seem to think he can catch up to. I wouldn't be shocked if he came right at him again with another good one. Very weakly on the ground. That goes foul, so he stays alive with two strikes. And on 0-2, he misses with a fastball. Okay, so now is where I think you pull the string. Throw the El Cambio up there. Hasn't seen it yet, and I think he's set up for it right here. One and two, here it comes. Still a ball and two strikes. None out, runners at first and second. Now a swing, and he pops him up. And I believe, yes, the umpire signaling for the infield fly rule. And a moment now to glance at the Reds' lineup card in this one. Danny, who stands out to you? You always have to look out for a guy like Joey Votto. I mean, this guy is a career 300 hitter. You talk about consistent. He delivers a good at-bat and clutch hits 
basically every time he walks into the box. I love watching this guy. Here's Mark Trumbo now. First shot for him here. Two hits in five trips a night ago. In there at the knees, strike one. And set up behind the plate, Rusty Valentine, as you see the rest of the umpiring crew for this one. Dan, Rusty Valentine behind the dish tonight. He is north-south without question. Letters to knees. Well, I tell you what, he really favors a power pitcher. If you can consistently pitch at about the chest level and above, he'll call that high strike zone. I think he's a very friendly pitcher's umpire. Two quick strikes, and now the 0-2. And a fastball blew it right by him, and there are two down. If you've got a good fastball going and they're not handling, keep throwing it. Right there, three fastballs in a row. He gone. The catcher, Devin Mezzarocco, stands in. He gets it hard on the ground to the left. And that's through and to left, a base hit. And they're not going to get him as he's in there to score. Boy, after scoring a boatload yesterday, d -Row, they're off to a fast start again, striking here in the first inning. Yeah, this offense is on fire. Obviously, the hit meeting resonated with these guys. Scored a ton yesterday and picked up right where they left off. Standing in now, Jesse Winker, as he takes a cold strike at the knees. It's 0-1. Hey, he finds himself in a tough situation early, and he's going to have to execute a pitch to get out of it. But if he does, it'll build confidence, and he starts rolling as the later innings start happening. Yeah. Waved at and missed, and he's behind 0-2. Swing and a miss as he chased with two strikes, and that will retire the side. Reds will be forced to settle for just the one. We'll move on to the bottom half of inning number one. Reds out in front, one to nothing. Luis Castillo gets the start for Cincinnati in this one. What do we need to know here, Danny? Hey, I'm really excited to watch this guy in this one. He strung together a solid season up to this point. ERA in the low twos, and that's not an easy thing to do in this day and age of high-scoring games and home runs and teams filled with guys that get hit throughout the lineup. This is a really good pitcher. Here's D. Gordon now. He enters play at number six in National League batting average. First pitch of the at-bat. And he fouls this one off. And guys, these Reds, as they enter play here this afternoon, even after the victory last time out, they come in trying to turn things around as they've been slumping of late, winning in just three of their last nine games. Hey, thanks, Matty. Hey, you know what, d -Roll? Try to get on a kind of a little mini winning streak here. Losing the first game of this series, winning game two, and hopefully winning this series by pulling one out here today. Yeah, Dan, they were able to shower that first loss off in the first game of the series and had a nice bounce-back game yesterday. Let's see if they can steal the series. Boy, this is just a case of another really good hitter finding a way, even though that was a soft liner, finding a way to get hits. Yeah, he usually hits rockets and catches the barrel, but even his soft liners fall. Dan, he has a knack for keeping his bat in his zone and giving himself a chance much longer than the average ball player. Here comes the first pitch. And he gets the call that time for strike number one. Castillo has made a name for himself as a starter that simply misses the barrel of the bat. He rarely allows a large number of hits, and he does a pretty good job at keeping the ball in the ballpark when the hitters do make contact. And a good idea to hold off on that swing. It's ball one. Well, you're in trouble at the plate if you fall behind this guy, 0-2. So that was a good job to hold up right there. 
Now the one and one pitch. Runs a bit inside for a ball. The two one home. Doesn't catch the outside corner. It's a ball. A veteran hitter certainly knows when he's got wheels on first base, he's probably getting a fastball and he's probably getting it middle away. Might be a great time to get super aggressive. Throw over to the bag and he's back easily. The 3 1 takes a strike for a full count now, 3 and 2. Tries to hold back on the swing, and the home plate umpire says he did so successfully. Mm, it's ball four. Always tough to issue a free pass, but especially troublesome when you give up a single right before that to start the inning. We'll see if he can figure out a way to wiggle out of this. Digging in now, Giancarlo Stanton is currently fourth in the National League RBI race with a chance to add to that total here. Ready. Here's the first offering. And that misses for ball one. Gordon on second. Yelich at first with no out. Two balls and no strikes. The count is Stanton. Great chance right here as a hitter to be aggressive. You can pretty much count on a pitcher. He's trying to get back in the strike zone. And with two guys on base right here, it's time to grip it and rip it. 2-0 count, the pitch. Down low, and the plot thickens here. 3 and 0. Oh. He's got himself into a little bit of trouble out here. Middle of the order up in a run scoring situation, and now he might have to challenge him. Gonna have to make some good pitches here. 3-0. Finds the zone, strike one. Three and one with two on, and this is where you, you got to be geared up for something to drive. I don't think you can just groove in one right here. You still have to try to make a competitive pitch. The three and one pitch. Hit to short. He's got it. One there. On Devato, a double play. Time now for a glance at the Marlins lineup card in this one. Mark, what's your take on him against one of the best starters in the game? Hey, this lineup's got to do it a little bit differently. It's not the modern version of three true outcomes, walk, strikeouts, home runs. This is a team that beats you down, manufacturing runs, getting guys on base, keeping the defense on its toes and waiting for them to make the mistake. In is the third baseman, Evan Longoria. And as you check out his righty lefty splits, no surprise that he hits better against southpaws than he does against right handers. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. Fouled away. The men on third with two down. High in the air down the right field line. But this is going to wind up a foul ball. Little guessing game going on right now. Being late on that fastball after the change. He and we'll have to leave it there as this is strike three. And that will retire the side. One left for Miami. It remains one nothing.
Here's Todd Frazier now. He went deep in the contest last night. First offering on its way. Breaking ball taken right down the middle. Ooh, I'm shocked he got away with that one, boys. Curveball right down the middle of the plate. And for him to take that pitch looking, he had to be sitting on something else. But he should have pulled the trigger. The windup and the 0-1. Second pitch is chopped foul right at home plate, and he's behind now 0-2. Back-to-back breaking balls. He just missed that one right there, fouling it away. Do not expect a third. And he'll try and tempt him with one in the dirt, but he'll hold back here. It's 1-2. and two. Tried to get him to chase that 0-2 curveball there, but he wasn't biting. Very well could see it again here, though. Fouled off. Swing and a miss as he ran the fastball right by him for the first down. All right, here's the defensive alignment for the Miami Marlins. And guys, we'd be remiss if we didn't focus on the gold glover at second base, D. Gordon. He can beat you in so many ways on the base pass, but let's not kid ourselves. Athleticism allows him to make some pretty special plays on the defensive side of the ball. Now at the plate, Scott Schebler, as he'll get his first opportunity in this one. First pitch coming. Here it is. Breaking inside. ball just misses the inside corner. One out. Nobody on. One and two as he chases the slider. Schepler even at two balls and two strikes. Fastball didn't miss by much, and it's a full count now. Three and two. Oh, and this is swung on and missed. Four strikeouts already, and that's out number two. Two up, two down on strikes in this inning. He looks really sharp out there, guys. Now at the plate, Luis Castillo. First two men in the inning have both gone down via the punch out, so we'll see if he can fare any better. Swing and a miss that time. It's 0-1. Two out, nobody on. Grounded up the first baseline. And that's through for a hit. Oh, and he can't reel it in out there. Around second. He's on his way to third. The tag, and he is out at third. And with that, the side is retired. One, two, three, go the Reds. He played an inning and a half. It's one to nothing. Now to the plate.
Chance Sisko. He'll lead things off here in this one-run contest. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Off-speed pitch in the dirt as he takes it for a ball. And he misses again, 2-0. and You know, sometimes it takes a pitcher a few pitches to get going, but those two pitches weren't even close. Falls behind in the count, 2-0. and It's time to start getting locked in. And he'll lay the fastball in here to get the count back to 2-1. and one. Off-speed pitch misses here, and he runs it to 3-1. and one. He walked the guy back in the first, and now he's looking like he might hand out another free pass to the leadoff guy here. You can't be walking a guy in inning and think you're going to have any success. Now a ball lined to the left side, but foul. Now a check swing, and he went around, says the home plate umpire. Tough ruling, but it's out number one. Okay, here's how the Reds are lining up in this one. And let's focus our attention on first baseman Joey Votto. I don't think this guy gets enough credit for his defense because he's so dynamic on the offensive side, but one of the most prepared players in our sport, and half of that is definitely attributed to the defensive side of the ball. Coming to the plate now, Carmen Lopez. He'll get to take his first cuts here. First pitch of the at-bat. Hit back up the middle. To his left, Childers. Throw gets him. Two down. Batting seven. First baseman, J.T. Realmuto. Stepping up to the plate, J.T. Realmuto. And as you take a look at the splits here, he's actually better against right-handed pitching this season. First pitch of the at-bat. Sharp slider that time. Just missed inside. Bases are empty here with two men out. High fly ball out to straightaway center. Shebler is there and he'll make the catch to retire the side. Miami down in order. Now in the box, Jimmy Childers. He scored after reaching on a walk in his first at-bat. Jimmy Childers. First pitch coming. Here it is. A swing and a miss on a ball that jammed him. When a guy's featuring big-time velocity like this, you have to be on the fastball. It's your only chance. You'll tip your hat on some nasty off-speed stuff, but you've got to be ready for the heater. One and one to the Reds' leadoff man. Lifted down the line and left. And this will wind up a foul ball. Fastball called strike three. And there's the first out of the inning. Now batting. Second base. In now for the Reds. Jose Peraza. He drew a walk his first time up. First pitch on its way. 0-1 oh, the count. Bases are empty, one man out. And that's a called strike at the letters. Though that looked high from here, it's 0-2 now. He's attacking this hitter a lot more aggressively than he did the first time when he faced him and issued a walk. Coming right after him here. Throw on to first, two gone. The first baseman, number 19, Joey Lombardo. In is Joey Votto now. 0 for 1 here in the early going. First offering on its way. Hey. Takes a high fastball for a strike. Yeah, I'm shocked he let that first pitch go right there. High fastball, but usually those ones travel the furthest. The wind up and the 0 1. And he'll fight this one fouled off to the left as the count goes to 0-2.
Halfway to 100 pitches. Here it is. And he'll try to get him to chase the fastball there, but he lays off one and two. Those were two great executed pitches right there away from this batter. He can hurt you in a heartbeat. I don't think anything's going to leak out over the heart of the plate. Got him looking, and that ends the inning. Reds are down in order, but they lead it one to nothing. Leading off the inning, Christian Colon. As they'll look to get something going here and even this game up. Christian Colon. Here comes the first pitch. This is line to left. But he'll hardly need to move out there in left as this is called in for the first down. So here now is the pitcher, Freddie Ferreira. First delivery to him on the way. A fastball down near the shoe tops. That's wide 2 and 0. Oh. Might get the take sign here until he sees a strike. He's not known to be a very good hitting pitcher. Now the 2 0. -oh. It's laid off, but in there for strike one. Oh. Too high that time, and it's three and one. One thing that could nag at you as a pitcher is having to work really hard to get a guy that you think you should be able to cruise right through. He's not known for his offensive prowess, but he's putting together a real nice at bat here. Popped him up. Peraza ranging into shallow right. And that's the second out of the inning. Up next for the Marlins. Tracking Digging in. D. Gordon. D. Two away in the Marlins. inning. And then it looks like this could be another one, two, three inning for him. Yeah, he has really found a groove on the mound. And it's been impressive to watch. It'll be interesting to see how long he can keep this dominance up. Now the pitch. Hey. And he gets ahead 0-1. With two outs, they're not playing him to bunt here, and he didn't show it there, but I wouldn't be surprised if he wasn't at least thinking about it. He handles the bat pretty well, and he can definitely run. And this one's tapped foul at home plate. The wind-up and the 0-2 pitch. Pulled toward right center field. Shevler giving chase. He can't get to it. This one's down. Well, you know what? Good hitters are good hitters for a reason, D. Rowe. To be able to hang in there on an 0-2 pitch and still be able to get a base hit, this guy's about as good as it gets. Yeah, I'm blown away by this guy, Dan. You wouldn't know if you showed up. You wouldn't know if it's 2-0, 3-1, 0-2. Counts do not matter. This guy trusts in his craft. In is Christian Yelich. As the first pitch here's a bit high, it's ball one. As a hitter right here, you have to tell yourself, I can't get too big. Don't let the moment get away from me. A nice bullet in the gap gets the job done in this situation. A 1-0 delivery. Pitch out. Nothing doing. Outside, 3-0 and oh now. It's amazing how quick an inning can get away from you. You're cruising, first two outs are super quick, little single happens, and now you're down 3-0 with the chance of maybe a little two-out lightning happening. Line drive to left. That gets down, and the inning continues. Hey, after back-to-back two-out hits right now, this pitcher thought he was going to cruise through this inning, and now he's got traffic, and he's in jeopardy with a ball in the gap or a ball missed over the heart of the plate, a crooked number going on the board. Giancarlo Stanton now. 
as he looks at a fastball that misses off the plate for ball one. Two on, two out for him here in the third. That's inside. 2 and 0. Oh. Well, 2 and 0 oh now, and this is where he makes his money. If he gets a pitch to hack at, you can bet he's not going to hold back. Good lead there at second. Here's the pitch. Two balls and a strike. I tip my hat to the batter right there for taking that pitch. Most guys would have definitely been swinging in that situation. 2 0 -oh fastball, but that was not in the zone he was looking for. Move on to the next pitch. Decent lead at second. Here's the pitch. And this one's chopped foul right at home plate. Here now the 2 2. It's laid off, and the count runs full. He really needs to find a pitch to put this guy away with right here, right now. He can't allow this inning to get any worse than it's already become. He's set. Here's the 3 and 2. Smoked on the ground up the middle. Scooped up on the backhand. Go on to first to be in time in the Marlins.
can't cash in here and that. So now the Reds cleanup hitter, Mark Trumbo, looking to put the ball in play here. He went down on strikes in his first at bat. The wind up and the 0 1. Line drive, base hit into the left center field gap. And he'll pull into second here with nobody out. There's no question he's been struggling at the dish lately, trying to do anything to get himself going. So he's got to feel pretty good after that double. Not to take anything away from him, but I think I could have probably hit that pitch. Yeah, that's one of those gift pitches, not the location he was shooting for. In now, Devin Mesoraco, high in the air out to center field. Yelich is under it. He makes the play, runner tags and hits for third. And he'll make it up to third safely here with one away. Good time now to check out the Marlins' road to the show report as you see a couple of players in the upper levels of the minors that have been making waves as of late. Digging in to try it again. Jesse Winker, he's 0 for 1 thus far. First pitch on its way. Yep, Missed with a way slider. Out. Both clubs with three hits in the ballgame. Hit in the air out to center field. Yelich is under it. Makes the catch, but the runner from third breaks for home. And it's a sack fly and an RBI. It's now a 2-0 game. How about it? Here's Todd Frazier now. Base is empty and two gone following the sacrifice fly. No balls in one strike. Frazier, or the Todd Father as he's affectionately called. This is the final year of his current deal, so he'll be a free agent at season's end. You know, Matty, I know he's in the final year of his contract, but he's playing to expectations, to be honest with you. I know he, need, he wants to turn it up a little bit, though, as he approaches the end of the season and make that salary push as he heads towards free agency again. And he struck him out, his seventh of the ball game, and that ends the inning. So it... Leading off the inning, Evan Longoria. And they'll need him to get something going here. First pitch of the at-bat. And that changeup makes him jump, a swing and a miss. Oh, and two count, here's the pitch. Swing and a ball hit high, but not very far out toward right center. Shebler comes on now, and he has it one down. Now batting. Catcher. Oh. And that'll bring up the catcher, Chance oh. Cisco. 0 for 1 for him here in this one. He's ready. Here's the first offering. Late that time for a strike. Into the windup, here comes the 0-1. And, and he misses with it, 1-1. One and one. I like that they went away with that pitch right there. They really tried to tie him up on that previous pitch, so he was probably what we call inside conscious. He didn't get a strike there, but I'm guessing he was looking for another ball in. A fastball that just misses inside. And he can't catch the corner here, so he's behind three and one. Time for him to attack on the mound. He knows his team's struggling offensively. Don't mess around and try and nibble. Just be on the attack and let them beat you. This is skied into short left center. And he will make the play out there, and there are two away now. 
the left field, number two, Carmen Lopez. Coming to the plate now, Carmen Lopez. He got on top of one and was a ground out victim last time. First offering on its way. Nope. He'll start him here with a changeup, but it's taken for ball one. I don't know why in the world anybody would want to be an umpire. That manager has given this umpire an earful on a pitch that he thought was a strike, and he's certainly trying to defend his pitcher. Fastball sorry, misses good. away here. It's 2-0. Oh. Lazy fly ball out to center field. Chebler moving forward. He gets there to make the play, and that ends the inning. One, two, three. In now, Scott Shebler. He'll start off the fifth in this one. Center fielder, Scott Shebler. First pitch of the at-bat. A high fastball is in there. Wind up and the 0-2 pitch. Ball swung on and hit high down the line in left, but it'll get back in among the crowd, so the count holds it 0-2. Got him. And that's eight strikeouts now for him in the ball game. Oh, man, he's been absolutely getting overmatched at the plate the last couple of games. That's his fifth strikeout in this series alone. So clearly this pitching staff, they figured out how to attack this guy. We'll see if he can make any adjustments. Into the box, Luis Castillo. As he will take strike one on the fastball here, no balls and a strike. And recall he doubled his first time through, but was thrown out trying to stretch that into a triple. The wind up and the 0 1. And it's fouled away. And he goes and chops this one out towards second. Gordon is there, and there are two away now. Now batting, Jimmy Childers. So the batting order turns over now and set to go Jimmy Childers. He'll look to bounce back after striking out his last time up. In there, no balls and a strike. Frozen with a high fastball there. We'll see if they try to climb the ladder even more on the next pitch. Two runs, three hits, and no errors in the game for Cincinnati thus far. High in the air out to center field. Yelich is under it, makes the catch, and that'll retire the side. One, two, three, go the Reds. But they're on top, two to nothing. Stepping in, JT Realmuto. He flew out in his last at bat. Things not looking very good so far in this one, but we're still in the middle innings. They're down by a couple of runs, and this would be the right place and the right time to get something going. The last thing they want to do is to try to come from behind and win this one in the eighth or ninth inning. That's through for a base hit, and he's one for two now. And they're going to hold him to a single here as they do a nice job of getting it back in quickly. Dan, that hit right there extends his hit streak to eight games. Are you aware of stuff like that? No doubt about it right now. He's swinging the bat really well, and after that knock right there, hey, listen, eight games is nothing to sneeze at, so you can say, hey, he's going to whole calendar week with getting at least one base hit, so there's a lot of positives going on right now. And here's a fastball called for strike one. Oh, one here's the pitch and that slider is almost in the dirt Real Muto on it first nobody out and he lays off for a ball two and one
This one bounces off the pitcher. And oh, no chance for Votto there. It's over his head. And he's going to make it up to second base safely as he's in there. My word. The pitcher, number 19, Freddy Barrera. Robbie Valencia will come on to the pin. Number 33, Robbie Valencia. set and the 0-1. It's a fastball that misses. Runners at second and third here. Nobody out. Hit on the ground out to short. Childers ranges to his left. Throw to first is in time, but meanwhile the runner is in to score. A simple ground ball to the infield, but the run does come home from third, and they cut their deficit to only one run. Here's D. Gordon now, as he's got a chance to tie this ball game up with that equalizing run just 90 feet away at third. First delivery to him on the way. And that one just missed outside. With the infield back and a runner at third, he's definitely pitching for a strikeout or maybe something like a harmless pop-up. You could see it from that high fastball, but that was just a good job of laying off that pitch. 1-0 pitch on the way. Heading out towards shallow right. Trumbo has a read on it. He makes the catch. Here comes the runner from third. But I don't think he had designs on even really trying it as he retreats with two away now. In is Christian Yelich. He steps in off a base hit in his last at-bat. Trying to hold the lead. Here's the delivery. And no swing, apparently. Ball one. Flying toward right center. And that'll get down out there. And they'll tie the ball game if the run scores, evening things at two. You know, Dero, there are certain hitters that just love to come up and clutch two out RBI situations, and this guy certainly is one of those guys. Yeah, they're able to slow the moment down. It's not for everybody. This guy has ice water in his veins consistently coming through in big spots. Nice job right there to tie this one up. Giancarlo Stanton now. As he'll look at a fastball in there on the outer half, it's 0-1.
and he lays off for ball one. And this is taken for a called strike. Oh, that's a tough call. Now one and two. Two runs, six hits, and no errors in the game for the Marlins. Line, but speared on a hop. On to second for the force out, and the side is retired. So two runs on three hits, one error in the inning. Kyle Bearclaw takes over to start the sixth inning on the mound. Number 46. Into the box now, Jose Peraza. He was retired via the ground ball last time up. He set and the pitch. There's a strike. Oh, and one, here it comes. Swing and a miss just behind a lively fastball. He's going to need to shorten up and get that foot down a little bit earlier if he hopes to be catching up to that fastball. Now the fastball is right by him as he swings and misses for the first out of the inning. Didn't mess around much in that at bat, Dan. No, that was pretty impressive, Matt. I really like a pitcher that trusts and works off his fastball. And right there, he decided he didn't need to use anything else. Three straight heaters and go grab some bench. In is Joey Votto now. As he'll take a look at ball one. He's 0 for 2 in the ballgame so far. One one count to the Reds first baseman. A nice adjustment right there for him to get on top of that baseball and drive it to the corner. The first pitch he obviously tried to overthrow got under it and it sailed on him a little bit. In tight with the slider two and two. I know he buried that slider in right there but that's a dangerous pitch. If he doesn't pot commit and bury that inside it leaks out over the plate he can get hurt with that pitch. One out, nobody on. And a wave and a miss on a ball that was way out of the strike zone. There are two away now. No problems for him on the mound since he's come out of the pen to start this inning. That's back-to-back -back Ks, and he's making it look pretty easy. This has the makings of a good outing so far. So coming to the plate, Mark Trumbo will attempt to put the ball in play for a change here with the first two guys going down on strikes to start the inning. Bearclaw or Bear for short. He was selected in the seventh round during the first year player draft of 2012. I know this guy wouldn't go into the category of superstar, but to grind out the career he has being drafted where he was, my hat's off to him. Two out, nobody on. And ooh, that strike zone's getting a little inconsistent now. It's two and two. Trying to nibble here, and he misses to run it full now. Three and two. Looking to set down the side on strikes. Here he comes. And a great inning here as he gets another punch out and strikes out the side in order. Three up, three down, three strikeouts. Not too shabby. More matinee baseball here on a Wednesday afternoon following this. Stepping up now, Evan Longoria. Over two here to start the afternoon. Evan Longoria. He's ready. Here's the first offering. Missed with a slider. Right here, he's looking to get himself into a good hitter's count so he can take a rip and maybe give his team the lead. He certainly has the power. The 1 0. Hit on the ground out to short. Backhanded. Throws in time, and that's out number one. Up next for the Marlins. Patrick. At the plate, Chance Sisko. It was a flyout for him in his last trip. 
on its way is pitch number 75. Popped him up. Peraza moving to his left. Two down. The left field, up two. next for Miami, Harmon Lopez. Lopez. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. A little bouncer. That rolls foul for strike one. Bases are empty here with two men out. This should end the inning as it's sent out to second. Throw goes to Votto over at first. It's in time to retire the side. Welcome back to South Florida. All tied at two apiece as we get set to start the seventh. But before we do, let's have a look at our game summary through the first six. The catcher Devin Mezzarocco stands in. He starts off the inning against a guy who struck out the side last inning. How did they get to him here? I'm not sure, Matt, that they want to stay as patient. He's been throwing a lot of strikes. They might want to start swinging a little bit earlier in the count. Looking for the strikeout. Here's the 0-2 pitch. And a good bite to that slider as he swings through it for the first out of the inning. Classic slider down and away for the strikeout there. Not a whole lot to say about that pitch that hasn't been said a million times already. That's just a real tough pitch for a hitter to pick up out of a pitcher's hand. So they end up chasing when they're in protect mode. First pitch on its way. And that is off the first base bag. And that's by him down the line in right field toward the corner. And he's going to make it there. Barely as he's in the second base with a double. Everyone knows that this guy's numbers are not where he wants them to be so far this year. But you never know by that swing. He looked fluid and confident driving that pitch for a double. We'll see if that gets him going a bit. In there at the letters 0-1. This is going to be an interesting at bat. I think he has to be pitching for a strike out here, so we'll see what kind of sequence he uses. And that's through into right field for a base hit. He's in at second safely as a run is also win, and with it, they take the lead. Boy, those have to feel really good, d -Row. You get late in the game, you come up with a big RBI base hit right here to give your team the lead. Yeah, no one remembers that ground ball with eyes in the top of the second inning. You want to show up when the game is on the line. Can you quiet your emotions down, take the crowd out of it, and slow yourself down enough to come through? And that's exactly what he did. And that brings up Scott Shepler. 0 for 2 from him so far in this one. Here's the 0-1. And this is wide. One ball and one strike. Gonzalez stands 6-2 and throws from the right side. He's a five-year vet at the major league level. He's set and the 2-1 pitch. High and deep down the left field line. And this will wind up a foul ball. The 2-2. Again, he sends it out of play. 2-2 one more time. Another one sent foul. Frazier leads off second with one gun in the inning. A little late with the swing, but he stays alive. Still 2-2. Two and two. High in the air and drifting out to shallow center. Here comes Yelich. Two down. So stepping in, Luis Castillo. One for two with a double on his line thus far. Looking to keep this a one-run game, the pitch. And he holds up here, but the pitch is a cold strike anyway. Swing and a miss, and he's in trouble now, 0-2. Hey, I know it's the pitcher at the plate, but he's going to grind it out right here. He's got a chance to help himself, and nothing's a bigger backbreaker to a team than watching the pitcher drive in the run. Got him swinging, and that will end the inning. Ready for another chance? JT Realmuto, a hit in two tries so far. This thing's far from over, even though we're moving into the back end of this game. Only down by one. All they need to do is get this leadoff guy, and they're an extra base hit away from tying this thing up. And that finds some outfield grass. It's a base hit. With that, the Marlins get a good start to the inning with their leadoff man aboard. 
they need to be aggressive right here from the offensive standpoint. Lead off base hit, bottom of the seventh, you're down one. This has to be the moment they scratch one across. Here comes the red skipper up out of the dugout on his way to the mound. And it would appear he's seen enough of his starter this afternoon. Tommy Kingley will come out and take the ball here as he'll be making his 15th appearance of the year. Into the box now, Christian Colon. Very tight ball game. Three to two our score in inning number seven. Quick check on that tying run at first. Just keeping him close. Oh and two, here it is. In the dirt here. And he'll rein it in as the count moves to one and two. The one two. And this one gets away. The throw is low and he can't make the pick. Well, the intent there with that two strike pitch was obviously to get him to fish for something he couldn't do a whole lot with, but. There's the risk that comes with that as well. If you don't execute or your catcher can't handle it very well, you give up three bases. And a good throw gets him one gone. Now batting. Edgar Severino Gonzalez. Brendan Rury will come on to pinch hit here in a big spot. Number 28. Brandon Rury. Sliced hard on the ground. And the throw to first will take care of him, but it comes at a cost as the tying run is in the score. I like that he didn't try to do too much there. All he needed was a ground ball to tie this thing up, and that's exactly what he does. That's great situational hitting. He's set. Here it comes. And that misses ball one. And now the Reds are going to get the bullpen moving here. It's a lefty and a right-handed up and throwing. Here comes the 1-0. Grounded back up the middle. A dive, but he can't knock it down. It's through for a base hit. Hey, Dero, not a bad night. Three singles, but hey, don't take three for four every day of the week. Yeah, in today's day and age, Dan, where everything's a home or a walk or a strikeout, it's refreshing to see this guy throw out three base hits. In is Christian Yelich. As he will swing at the first pitch and line this one into left center, and that's going to get down for extra bases. In the score is the runner from first. Dan, you'll take RBIs any way you can get them, but when they give your team the lead in the late innings, man, that feels good. Oh, it especially does, especially when you start to score runs late in the game off of quality pitching. When runs are at a premium, that's one makes you feel really good about yourself. Giancarlo Stanton now, 0 for 3 to this point. Yeah, not his game so far. He's such a good hitter. We all kind of expect him to pick up two or three hits most of the time. That's not really how baseball works, though. First pitch coming, here it is. Way out in front. They've done a real nice job keeping this guy into wraps in this one. No hits for him so far, and what stands out to me is they're going. There's a swing and a drive, and everybody's just going to sit back and watch that one fly. A no-doubt home run. Long two-run homer off the bat of Giancarlo Stanton. 19th home run for him on the season, and it's now 6-3. to three. There's not a hotter hitter in all of baseball, folks, as the guy on the mound can attest. He's seeing everything they're throwing at a well right now, and he's not missing them either. Uh, 
In is the third baseman, Evan Longoria. As the first pitch misses to him, it's ball one. He's hitless in three at-bats to this point. The 1-0 is in off the plate. This inning really feels like it's getting away from him out there. As a reliever, you can't let that happen. Nothing you can do about what's already happened, and it's only going to get worse if you're not focusing on the guy in the batter's box. 3-0 to him now. The 3-0 pitch is looked at for the first strike. Got to believe he had the green light in that situation. Two outs, 3-0 count. This guy can certainly handle the bat. That's a perfect situation to let him loose. But I love the fact that he's key-holding a certain area, and it wasn't what he was looking for. Change up inside. They lost him ball four. Maury Kagan will come on in relief now as he'll make his 35th appearance of the season. Chance Sisko will be the first to greet him here as he stands in with a runner at first and two away. First pitch here misses wide, 1 0. He's ready. Here's the 1 0. Little dribbler down the line, but that one rolls foul. That misses two and one. Four runs here in this half inning. Three and one now. Well, this is the matchup they wanted bringing in the reliever, but falling behind two and zero oh doesn't exactly help the situation very much. Fastball is taken for a strike, and he runs it full three and two. All right, 3-2 count with two outs. The runner on first will be moving, so we'll see what happens. There are a lot of possible outcomes with this kind of play. Hit on the ground to third. Throw on to first will finally retire him as the inning will draw to a close. So they nearly bat around here as eight men come to the plate and they push across four runs. We'll look ahead to inning number eight now. The Marlins on top, six. James Conrad has been summoned from the bullpen as he'll do so to start the eighth. So the lineup flips over and digging in, Jimmy Childers. 0 for 2 with a walk for him so far. Even though we're moving into the back end of this game, they're only down by a couple of runs. You know that old slogan, a bloop and a blast? They could certainly use that right now. 0 oh, and 1 count and the pitch. A breaking ball over the outside corner for strike two. Great spot with that pitch down and away. He'll be fine coming out of the bullpen in this one if he can keep hitting that spot. Oh, fastball swung on and missed. And for the second time today, he's gone on strikes. With how hard guys throw these days, 94 miles an hour is good, but not as impressive as it used to be. Professional hitters can catch up with that, so it's all about setting the fastball up with good off-speed stuff to make it look more effective. And that's exactly what he did right there. A changeup that just catches the bottom of the zone for a strike. Faces are empty, one man out. Popped him up. Gordon is there for it. And that's the second out of the inning. In is Joey Votto now. Two away here in the eighth, and time's running out on him, Danny. Yeah, they don't have a lot of outs left to work with, so it's time for someone to make something happen if they're going to get back into this thing. Watches a fastball right there for strike one. You know, you look at this hitter, he doesn't care about being down 0-1. He doesn't care about having two strikes with him. He's got the utmost confidence in his ability to work back into the count and get him something over the heart of the plate. And he fouls this one off. Struck him out. Struck him out again, I should say. His third punch out of the game. Reds are down in order. They're still doubled up. It's 6-3. Drew Storen is on to pitch out of the bullpen in the bottom half of the eighth. Number 31. Carmen Lopez will be the first one to greet him here as he'll be forced to turn around and hit from the left side now. 
First delivery to him on the way. It's a swing and a high pop up. Votto has a play. One out. Now batting. Ready now for the Marlins. JT Wilmuto. He singled his last time up. He's ready. Here's the first offering. Tried to check it, and it's 0 and 1. Uh, tried to pull that one back, but he couldn't do it, and it's 0 and 2 now. Checked his swing there. Did he go around? No, says the first base umpire. Ball one. Count even at two and two to the Marlins catcher. Boy, that's a tough pitch to lay off right there just out of the strike zone. But listen, when you're a 300 hitter, you don't chase a lot of those so-called pitcher's pitches. This guy knows the strike zone. Hit hard on the ground towards second. On to first, and there were two down. The batter number 10, shortstop, Christian Colon. Standing in, Christian Colon. He's got a hit in three at bats to this point. Storen gets the sign. Here's the first pitch. Lifted into center field. Shevler will reach out with one hand to make the catch on the move, and that is ready once again. Mark Trumbo. It was a backwards K, a strikeout looking for him in his last at bat. Wei in Chen takes the ball now in inning number nine, looking to close the door. First delivery to him on the way. Fouled away. The wind up and the 0 1. A fastball right over the outside corner. And he struck out again. That's the third time he's gone down on strikes in this one. Ready now for Cincinnati. Devin Mesoraco. He struck out swinging in his last trip to the plate. This is hit high in the air out toward left center. After it is Yelich. Two gone. Trying to pick things up. where we left off Jesse Winker and he needs to make something happen they're down to their final out here in the ninth and he drops in a strike to start the at bat nothing in one hey with one of your better pitches is the straight changeup you can't be afraid to throw it at any count and at any time and hey first pitch if they're going to take it for strike one they're going to give it to you go ahead and throw it down the first baseline now the small but vocal crowd come to their feet Well, he went for the knockout pitch that time, but a good eye. One and two. The Reds down to their last strike. Two out, nobody on. Good plate discipline to lay off the slider that time, and he draws even a two and two. Fastball that just misses inside. Well, you don't want to get caught looking for the final out. That's a tough pitch to lay off. Impressive that he did. Has them down to their final strike. Here it comes. 
count remains full. Bases are empty here with two men out. Now a swing and a fly ball. And this should do it. Catch is made and the Marlins have taken the rubber match of this three game set as this ball game is over. Well maybe a little bit of a problem is that they had to wind up going to that bullpen quite a bit. Five pitchers are going to combine to finish this one to get the win. Six to three the final score today. The Miami Marlins put up four runs in the seventh to carry them to victory. Severino Gonzalez earns his third win of the year in relief. Wei in Chen records the save is 19th of the campaign. So that'll just about do it for us this afternoon. Thanks to Mark Rosa and Dan Plezak and the rest of our crew. I'm Matt Vaskersian. This has been a presentation of MLB The Show. To find out more, head over to theshownation.com. Here now is our final line score for this afternoon. First for the victorious Miami Marlins, six runs. Ten hits, no errors. They left five men on base. For the Reds, three runs, five hits, one error. They left three men on base. Time of the ball game, three hours and 21 minutes. A reminder that Marlins shuttle buses are available outside Marlins Park with service to the Homer Metro Rail Station.